Question 4. Comparing ionization energy. Which one is the least endothermic? Which one is the most endothermic? So, first of all, ionization energy is removal of an electron. So, they're asking us which one is the easiest to remove and which one is the hardest to remove among all three. Least endothermic means easiest to remove. Most endothermic means you have to put in more energy. It's the hardest to remove the electron. You have to put in more effort to remove the electron. It means the electron is held tighter to the atom itself. So we are comparing radon, francium and radian. So you need the periodic table to compare. Radon is actually in group 8. Right, I'll put it here. Francium is actually group 1 but one period below radon and radian is in group 2 next to francium so we settle the one that is the hardest to remove the electron first the hardest to remove is actually from the radon because we are removing an electron that's closer to the center francium and radian has one more shell so Comparatively, it's easier to remove electrons from these two because the electron is located in the one more shell away from the center compared to radon, which is closer to the center. So radon will be the hardest to remove an electron or to remove the first electron. Then we have francium and radium. Francium has one less protons than radium. So it will not have a strong electron strong attraction to the outer electron compared to radian. Okay, I repeat, francium has less protons than radian, so it holds on to these outer electrons less tightly. So francium is easier than radian. That means among all three, we have francium, least endothermic, radian, then radon. So answer is A. Question 5, we need to count the protons, neutrons and electrons for all these different species. So I'll just put P, protons, electrons and neutrons. Now protons is straightforward. Protons, this is the number for the protons, we have 13. Neutrons, the top number is the neutron plus proton. So we have 27 neutrons and protons, we have 13 protons, so it means neutrons must be 14, right? The total will be the top number. And from there, we can compare the electrons. Since there's no charge, it means your electrons and the protons are the same number. We have 13 protons, we will have 13 electrons. So we follow this procedure and we go through the options quickly. Right, 17 protons, 35 minus 17, 18 neutrons. Now there's a minus one charge here. It means that we have more electrons than protons. And if it's minus one, we have one more electron than proton. So we have 18 electrons. Protons for sulfur, 16. Neutrons, 32 minus 16 electrons we have two minus it means we have two extra electrons compared to the protons so we have 18 electrons proton 19 neutrons 39 minus 19 20 there's a plus charge it means we have more protons and we have more protons one more proton than the electron so these are the numbers so they are asking in which species are the numbers of protons, neutrons and electrons all different. So 19, 18, 20. D. Right, the rest they have. Two out of three being the same number, which is not what we want.
question 6 electrolysis of an ester right the information given is the the hydrolysis sorry not electrolysis the hydrolysis of an ester is slow in neutral solution but proceeds at a measurable rate when it is acidified so what is the function of the acid then right the acid so this is what I call acid catalyzed reaction the acid is actually increasing the rate of reaction I will not go into the mechanism in detail because that's quite beyond the syllabus right but understand that this is an acid catalyzed reaction Question 7 Reaction pathway for a reversible reaction So which statement is correct? Now Option A Activation energy of the reverse reaction is plus 80 kJ Activation energy Reverse reaction Meaning going from here to here right, The activation energy is actually All the way from here to here the hill that you have to climb when you go backwards so it is actually 80 plus so that is actually correct all right let's check the other options to make sure enthalpy change for the forward reaction is plus 30 forward reaction the enthalpy change means the difference between the energy levels it actually drops by 50 to become the product so this is actually the enthalpy change which is not plus 30 but it drops by 50 so it is minus 50 enthalpy change for the forward reaction is plus 50 same thing it's not as discussed it's minus 50 enthalpy change for the reverse reaction is plus 30 so reverse reaction the change is the difference and the difference is actually we have to gain 50 to go to this level so enthalpy change for the reverse reaction is not plus 30 it is plus 50 the amount we have to gain from going backwards right and this is the amount we have to gain question 8 why does the rate of a gaseous reaction increase when pressure is increased at constant temperature now key thing is constant temperature if it's constant temperature the particles the energy will have the same energy so more particles have energy that exceeds activation energy that's not true that can only come that should come about when either we increase the temperature or we decrease the activation energy right neither of that is happening down here so particles have more space to move when we increase the pressure actually the particles have less space to move so they are more crowded together right they have less space to move particles move faster again this is more dependent on temperature if they have higher temperature they have more energy and then they will move faster so the particles since we do not change the temperature they don't move faster what is true is because we squeeze them together we increase the pressure the particles now are closer together right and then they will end up colliding with one another more frequently so D is correct 